So Nick, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Um, you've published some data on this um, with regards to what biomarkers might be helpful in identifying patients that are responsive to omelazumab. Uh, well, Neil, in the clinical trial uh, arena, there's actually, we co published a couple of papers looking at this specific question. One is an analysis of the EXTRA study. Uh, as you know, this was a study looking at omelazumab added to ICS LABA in high-risk population. And it sounded like the high blood eosinophilic baseline, high pheno, uh, T2 biomarkers, suggest a better response in reducing exacerbation. We also looked at periostin, which is a, not a biomarker uh, uh, yet available now. And then when we looked at the pivotal studies with the map, we sort of replicated the, the blood eosinophil prediction, but also the severity of the disease. Uh, patients on LABA, on higher dose inhaled steroid, history of hospitalization, tend to have a better effect. Now that, uh, that was in the clinical trial, but I know Brad had done some yeah, work. Well, there's a recent article with real in word studies. European Respiratory Journal, uh, Mark Humbert's paper, looking at almost 80% of the patients in France on omelizumab, and the response was agnostic to their baseline eosinophil level. So even though I've published data previously that in the pivotal trials, Bessie and Solaire, that the annualized rate of exacerbations was more effectively decreased with the higher eosinophil counts when a more critical look at this over a 52-week period suggested that the acidophil count was not a major predictor. So I think to Nick's point that the jury is still out for that. The jury is still out. Aiden, you have thoughts about this? No, I think these are the two experts on that topic. <laughs> All right, I, I would agree. I agree. You guys have published a lot on this data. Um, so discuss Zoller's place in the treatment algorithm based on the pathophysiology, knowing that we don't really know, you know, is there, maybe there are some biomarkers that are predictive, maybe there aren't. Um, you know, in the severe population that has more exacerbations, maybe it's more helpful, but then we see some data that says, well, in the really severe population, maybe it's not helpful. What, what is its place? What is well, I think, I, I don't think the data says that the more severe, that's not helpful, but in the Prospero and the French study that Brad alluded to, uh, baseline blood eosinophil does not seem to be a predictor of response, i.e., whether the patient has high blood eosinophil or not, they have a, they have a response to omelizumab. In my mind, omelizumab works best in the allergic uh, phenotype patients. There are some case reports, case series of its use in non-allergic patients, but we, we don't, I don't personally use it in that, in that group. But certainly patients who have perineal allergies has failed ICS and LABA, continues to have exacerbations. Those are the classic patients uh, that would fit uh, omelizumab doesn't matter what their eosinophil or pheno level is, uh, this is the type of patient that would... As Aiden said a moment ago, it's those patients who have the Ig in the right bracket, who have a positive skin test, who have that driving their symptoms mm -hmm. that most are effectively handled with omelizumab. Sure. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that, and I think it, it speaks to the fact that maybe omelizumab is a bit more broadly allergic in the Th2 phenotype than, say, the anti-IL-5s. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a more restricted group. So, uh, but clearly the need for allergy, mm -hmm. the need for IgE with specific activity needs to be there in choosing that. Because for the IL-5s, if I gave you the flood page paper and said, do you think this is going to work? You'd say no. Exactly right. No. So it, it's, uh, I think omelizumab is a bit more broadly active. And I think perhaps, um, perhaps we'll find that with dupilumab and some of the uh, right. biologics yet to come. Right, right, exactly.